Although spring doesn't officially start until March 19th, astronomically speaking, spring has already sprung climatologically or meteorologically speaking. It's that middle three month period between the hottest three months and the coldest three months and March, April and May here in central Texas. We see an average high temperature of 77.8 degrees. We also make up about the lion's share of our rainfall this season. Uh, spring, typically the rainiest season for central Texas and for a good chunk of the United States, where we see just about a third of our whole entire year's worth of rain fall 11.05 inches is what we expect. Now as we move our way into this spring conditions across the globe may be changing a little bit and the temperature outlook for the country shows a pretty good chance for warmer than normal conditions from California into the Pacific Northwest stretching all the way over to the Great Lakes and down into the mid Atlantic where you see no coloring on this map. That means there are equal chances pretty much the same chance for either cooler than normal, above normal conditions, or right at average. And as we take a look at the precipitation map, we're kind of seeing the same thing. Although, as we move our way into April and May especially, there is a pretty good signal that the southeastern United States may be a little bit rainier than normal. Also, the western part of Texas could potentially be drier than normal, which may have implications on severe weather season here locally. If we get dry air, not a lot of rain across west Texas, that could help to push the dry line closer to the I-35 quarter, which is a typical spark for severe thunderstorms during the springtime months here in the southern plains. Now, one thing we're also looking out for to change over the next couple of months is El Nino. We have seen El Nino influence our weather now for about the past six to seven months at least, uh, likely even a little bit longer than that if you're taking, uh, depending on what metric you're looking at. Sea surface temperatures are still very warm in the Pacific just off the coast of South America, still warmer than average, which means that an El Nino is still around. However, conditions are expected to change over the course of the next Next couple of months for the three month period of time, April, May and June. It is a 78% chance that we switch from El Nino conditions to neutral or ENSO neutral conditions before what is likely going to be a La Nina emerges again across the western or eastern Pacific Ocean. Now, I want to take a look at a couple of different things. These are a tweet from Tyler Stanfield or an X, a post on X, I should say, a National Weather Service meteorologist. Uh, he was taking a look at some of the sea surface temperatures that were uh, near the El Nino region and also what's happening below the surface. This is back on December 24th and notice the top of this graph is close to the top of the ocean. So those sea surface temperatures, everything below it is of course below the surface. Warmer than normal conditions have been shown, but look at what has happened since December 24th. We're starting to see some colder air up well towards the surface, which should change our conditions from an El Nino over eventually to a La Nina this hurricane season. But even before this La Nina starts to emerge, we could see implications for severe weather season across the country. This is a research paper that was published back in 2016 talking about regional tornado outbreaks and their links to spring El Nino, spring La Ninas. And as we move through the next couple of months, we are going to transition into what this paper calls an early terminating El Nino. So basically what we're seeing, especially with the research done in this paper, is that for the central plains from Oklahoma all the way up, especially into the Midwest, there is a greater chance of severe weather whenever we get this early terminating El Nino, when we transition from an El Nino into a La Nina. Now that you see those boxed areas across central and north Texas. Yeah, we could see a slightly better chance of uh, regional tornado outbreaks during the springtime months here in our neck of the woods. However, one thing that has also been seen from this research paper, take a look at the moisture flux, how much moisture moves its way into the country. You see those brighter red colors across the central plains stretching into the Great Lakes. That is more moisture that has moved in than normal, which indicates usually better severe weather chances since you need moisture for those storms to get going. But on the flip side, as we take a look at this metric, this is called CAPE, 
basically storm fuel, those blue colors across the central and southern plains may indicate that whenever we transition from an El Nino to a La Nina, that we don't have as much storm fuel in our neck of the woods to get those severe storms going. Of course, we'll be keeping a keen eye on the severe weather chances for the next couple of months, so be sure to stay weather aware. Reporting in the studio, Sean Bellafuri, KWTX News 10.